Hello. Um, because my job only pays me for half of the week, I uh, have half a week to do um, basically nothing in. Um, so today I've been thinking about uh, models of computation because uh, it's better than cleaning my flat. Um, so recently there have been a few uh, models of Turing machines in the world. Um, there are the ones on the, the Game of Life, on aperiodic tilings, there's Matt Parker's Domino thing and so on. Um, but I think the Turing machine is quite boring because what it is, it's like you get a tape, it's got a load of bits on it and these bits have symbols on and these, these can be numbers, they can be like one, two, three and so on and you have a head that goes along and it reads it and it decides what to do. Um, and that looks quite a lot like a real machine. It looks like something you could actually build. Um, and that's distressingly practical for me. Um, so instead, something that I've been meaning to get my head around for absolutely ages is the SKI calculus. Um, so named because it's sponsored by a brand of yogurt or something. Um, what it is, is um, a set of three combinators called S, K and I. Um, the names probably stand for something in whatever language um, the person who was thinking it up was thinking it up in. Um, I stands for identity, but yeah. Anyway, so these three combinators are enough to um, do any computation. They're tur Turing complete. So any Turing machine you can make, or any program you can make for a Turing machine, um, you can make up a combination of all these combinators that does the same thing effectively. Um, so, thing is, they're so abstract and weird, it's pretty hard to get your head around. Um, so I'll just write out what they do first and explain some things. Um, so identity, i, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, i of x, i x equals x. The notation I'm using here, um, you write symbols, you read them from left to right, and when you've got two things next to each other, that means apply x to i. It's like function application. When you have um, f of, of x, that means f of f of x, so on. Except in this world, we never get down to the end where you actually apply it to something real. Or is real the right word? Yeah, you never apply it to anything. You always just end up with the same combinators, their potential computations. Um, so that was I. K works on two things and it gives you the first one. Just throwing the second one away. Um, so, simple so far. Now, S is pretty complicated. S, X, Y, Z is, what you get from that is X, Z applied to Y, Z. Um, so apply Z to Y, apply Z to X. Uh, remember everything you, everything you get is still a function. All of, you can only ever get functions back or combinators back. So X, Z is still a combinator. So that means you then apply Y, Z, this thing, to the result of what X, Z was. Okay. Um, so this is really, really tricky stuff. And because it's so just abstract, it has no relation to anything else. No one was inventing this to solve a problem. Um, it's hard to get some concrete examples to learn with. Um, so there aren't even numbers. Um, you can create them, you can make up pretend numbers by combinations of uh, combinators that you say this one represents zero, this one represents one, and so on and so forth. Um, but I won't do that yet. So anyway, what I did, um, I realized that these combinators, um, I, I could make them. If it, you have some way of making bits that look like combinators and the, the way you, you put them together is the same as the rules, uh, which I've just rubbed out. I should keep them there. Um, then 
it might be a bit easier to get my head around it. So, oh dear, that's wrong. Right, so what I've done is I spent the day drawing up something in Inkscape and then printing it out, then pasting it onto a pizza box because I had no card. Um, it was a terrible mistake because the pizza box stinks. Um, so I've made these bits of card that represent the different combinators. And I've stuck blue tack on the back of them. Um, so what I can do is use these to represent uh, computations or applications of combinators in the abstract world that combinators live in, that we think of as, as computations. Um, so um, let's show how I'm going to work this. So applying something means sticking it on top of. Um, so if I, no hang on, on the bottom. So if I apply x to i, that means I stick x on top of i. Um, then that, that's still X there. It's got I on underneath it. I can strip that I away. So I've got X. Um, similarly, K, if I stick X and Y on top, uh, then I take only the first one, KXY equals X. So when I've got this full up, I get rid of all that and be left with just X. Um, now, again, the problem is with this S combinator that we've got here. The definition of that needs two copies of the thing on the right. So if I have something like S, X, Y, I, and I am aware that X is upside down, typography fans. Um, if I have all that, then I need two copies of I. And if this thing on the right here is a, some mad com combinatoric thing, um, I either need to boil it down to one tile or just copy it, which is laborious. Anyway, so S, X, Y, Z is X, Z, Y, Z. So what that means is, here's my Z, I, so I need two of these. I apply one to each of the things that there were. And then I stick the second one on top of the first one. And then I can well, this one in particular uh, doesn't cancel down. So that's like X, I, Y, I, Y, I like. Um, so that's that. So there are some interesting things you can do with these that are, that are pretty straightforward, um, which I'll have a go at doing now. Uh, let's gather all these up, first of all. Right. Uh, what's the first one we're going to do? Oh, you can make a combinator that takes a single argument and applies it to itself. So what it looks like is S I I. So um, the thing that's great about these is everything in this universe is a potential computation. Um, I has the potential to have something added to it and that will result in something, which itself is a potential computation, whatever. So whenever you make up um, some combination of things that doesn't have all its slots filled in yet, that's like another combinator. So here I've got um, S with two I's on it. So that's S I I. I could call that A. So if I was writing these out, I could just say like, a X and that's the same as S I I X. Um, so I said this will apply something to itself, so let's try that. Let's do S I I X. So uh, there's my X. To work out S I need two copies of the third thing. Here we go. And you stick them on the first and second. And uh, then you stick the second one on top of the first one. Okay, uh, so this ix here, ix is the same as x, so I can get rid of the i. 
you end up with two X's there. And they've got, they're on top of an I, so I can get rid of that I. There you go. So here I've got X applied to X, which is what I said it would do. That's pretty cool. Um, so this is the combinator which takes a function and applies it to itself. So back in the normal function notation I was doing before, that's like f of f of x. Um, so this f f here is the same as a f without the exit x bit because everything is a potential computation in this world. Um, so that's fun. Um, I'm, I'm just reading off the Wikipedia page for SKI Calculus, by the way, if you want to follow along. Um, so, oh, right, so the next one, uh, you can make a combinator which takes two arguments and swaps them around. Um, so I'm, I'm going to make an operator with, called R. So the RXY is YX. Okay, so that involves, um, I'll write it out in the, the, the normal notation first of all. It's S applied to K, which is applied to SI. Um, well, that's K. So, here's my S. To that, I apply K, which has applied to it uh, SI. So, here's SI. I'm applying that to my K. This gets quite complicated. Um, I haven't yet built something big enough that these the rectangles overlap, but I'm sure it will happen eventually. Um, Okay, and then I apply my K as well. I stick it on the next empty spot. Um, so this is my combinator R. So now if I apply um, X and then Y to that, I should end up with um, Y, X. Okay, so I stick X on here. The way the S thing works is I need two of these. And I apply one to the left hand side. Oh no, sorry, that, that's the might most be on the left hand side. And one here. Okay. Um, right, so this the first one here, it had a, it was a K, but it's all filled up now, so I can do the K thing with it. And so it looks like that. K gives you the first thing which is this, so I chuck that one away. And then the remaining part of the S combinator before was that I apply the second bit to the first bit. So here we go. I have now got that after applying my X. So now if I apply Y to it, I should end up with YX. There's Y. Uh, it's an S combinator, so one goes there, one goes there. That's finished, that's a K. So I get the first one and I throw the rest away. An X, and I apply it to the here. And uh, underneath is an I, check it away. So here we go, I've got um, Y, X. So it works. Um, so, I don't know, this thing's quite, it's quite fun to play with. It's a bit um, tricky to know when you need to, to chuck stuff away because, well, you need to chuck stuff away when something's full up, but then you can't see what's underneath anymore. But you, you should be able to tell by how wide things are. Um, so, that's all sort of abstract and waffly. Um, so the most immediate way to apply this to something is to think of a way of representing Boolean logic with these combinators, um, which you can do by... Uh, so we need two things. 
We need something to represent true and we need something to represent false. Um, so we'll call k true and we will call um, ki false. Um, so I, I'm sure there is some reason why it has to be these particular two or why given that it's that this has to be that or something like that but I haven't read into it recently. Um, so anyway, so true is k and false is ki. Um, so fine. So can we make a not operation? So if we have, I want not true to be false and not false to be true. Um, so the Wikipedia page I'm working off because I'm lazy um, can only give the not operator as a postfix operator, which means it's something you apply after uh, the thing. So what you do is you do true not is false. Um, okay. So not is. Um, ki and then k. So that means if I want to negate true, which is k here, I make up a ki and a k and I apply them both and uh, that k is finished now so I don't take the first one so I'm left with just ki which is false. Cool. Um, so that's why that just answered my own question. And let's do not false. So I need, uh, I start with false and I apply ki to it. Um, so that means I just get the, the i out of here. And then I apply k. So I'm left with k. So not false is true. Cool. Uh, so I'm running to the limits of my uh, knowledge about this now. Um, we'll just do and next. So I want um, I want a combinator like that. So x and y is and y. Well, you can write a definition for x and y. So what that is is Ki again, apparently. So, how is that applied? That's applied postfix. So, if I have true and true, that means I write that I go true, true, uh, and. So, here's my and. Let's okay, so k goes there. My and goes here, and uh, I end up with uh, true. Okay, so what about true false? So true and false means um, I had a ki a minute ago, there we go. So this should end up in false. Blurdy blur, blurdy blur, and from that I get this. So that works. Um, so uh, I'm just going on and on now. Yeah. So from these two, uh, sorry, no, from these three combinators, um, I hope I've convinced you. You can you can do everything. Any computation that can be possibly done can be written in terms of these three combinators. And in fact, you don't even need this one um, because you can write i in terms of S and K. Um, if I start at the start, um, ah, right, yeah. So S, K, K is the same as I because if I do it, 
Um, here we get x, which means you need to apply that and that to that. And that's there, so that goes on that. And finished k means I get the x out of it. So start with x, end with x, Got that's the identity. So s, k, k is equal to i. So I can do it with two combinators even. You can actually do it with one. It's incredible, it blows my mind. Um, so this is uh, quite a fun model of computation that you wouldn't have thought could be made real, but um, I'm sort of getting there. This is almost automatic how this works, um, how things pile on top of each other and so on. Uh, so, hope you found this interesting.